Welcome to Ava General Baptist Church Online. It's so great to worship with you today. If you're watching this video as they are released, um, we are in Christmas. So I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Um, we've been studying about uh, joy being something, a gift that the Grinch can't even steal. And so I've got my friend the Grinch behind me as we celebrate Christmas this year. Um, in the Grinch movie, um, he steals everything from the Who's of Whoville. And he steals their trees, their decorations, their gifts, all this stuff. And their stockings are hung, all their stuff in, in the stockings and, and everything. And, and he's standing up on his mountain. And as he's standing on his mountain at the very end of the movie, you see him leaning in to listen because he just knows, there, knows there's going to be weeping and wailing and great sadness as, um, as the Who's wake up. And they discover that Christmas has been stolen. Everything's gone. But what he hears completely puzzles him. As he's standing there listening, he hears singing and joy and, and gladness. And he's thinking, what in the world is going on? That doesn't sound like sounds of sadness. That sounds like sounds of joy. And as um, at the very end, he starts coming to a realization that Christmas came without ribbons, he says. It came without tags. Christmas came without packages, boxes, or bags. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe, just maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And uh, he he's right. Christmas is a little bit, not just a little bit, a lot more than the packages, the bags, the stuff, the decorations, the parties, everything that happens around Christmas. Um, Christmas is about Jesus Christ, and he is more than a lot of the things that people can try to steal and take from us. And so that's why joy is a gift the Grinch can't steal. And I would like to welcome you to Whoville as we celebrate Christmas and um, we celebrate and we talk about the difference between joy and happiness. Joy is a gift the Grinch can't steal because joy is something that's internal. It's not external. Happiness a lot of times is based upon our external emotions. Uh, joy is something that's internal. It, it deals with our state, our condition of being a follower of Jesus Christ, being a child of God. Nobody can take that away. Uh, joy is something that since it's internal, it's based upon our state, our uh, condition with God as being a child of God. It's, it's constant. And whereas happiness can be temporary, um, if we're if we're going through a, a joyous, a, a happy moment, and we're um, have good things going on, on in our life, then we're happy. When those good things go away, then we're sad. And so we can know that joy is different. It goes through and goes way deeper than what's going on in our environment because it's eternal. And so Jesus came to bring us joy. By giving us a the gift of forgiveness. That's what Jesus Christ offers us. And so the question you and I are um, encountered with within scripture is, have we accepted that gift of forgiveness? Have you accepted that gift of forgiveness? That's the whole reason why Jesus came. And that's joy. The Greek words for joy, haro, um, or rejoice in scripture literally mean uh, it's the result of receiving God's grace. So joy, when you see that word rejoice or joy in scripture, it means um, the result or the outcome of receiving the grace of God. The Grinch could not steal. The Grinch could not steal the who's joy because what we found out through the movie is that it was not based on the material things around them. It wasn't based on the material things around them. So he could steal all the material things all he wanted. Did those material things add to their celebration? Of course. It made their houses look good. It made their, it made their, uh, the, the gifts that they had. It, it, it was fun giving those gifts, but it wasn't the source of their joy. And that's the same thing with us. The source of our joy is found in Jesus Christ. It may enhance our celebration. The things may enhance our celebration. But it's not the reason for our celebration of Christmas. If your joy of Christmas, if your joy in life is based around Jesus Christ, then nobody can steal that. That's the biblical joy that we're talking about. And so as we look at Matthew chapter 2, we see Jesus Christ is born. And as Jesus is born, um, some people come to see him as in verse today. Um, when when children are born, there's friends, there's family members, there's loved ones that come and they and they see the newborn child and they give gifts a lot of the times. 
But this child was different. This child was going to be the child that would be the sacrifice for all of humanity. He was going to sacrifice himself so and take the punishment for our sins that we deserve. And he was going to take that upon himself. This child was a big deal. This child was unlike any other child. This birth, this pregnancy was unlike any other pregnancy in all of humanity. And so as we read the visit of the wise men, we're reminded of some of those visitors that came. And where we see their source of joy, too, was not from the things of this world. They were the things from out of this world that came into this world, that namely being Jesus Christ himself. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and we've come to worship him. So they go to Jerusalem. And they go to King Herod and they, they ask him and the word gets to King Herod and he's like, whoa, wait, I'm the king here. This, this is troubling. I didn't know there was another king. No one's been born in my house. When Herod, the king, heard this, he was troubled and all of Jerusalem was troubled with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. He got all the scribes, all the religious people, all the chief priests together, and he says, where is the Christ to be born? Where is the Messiah to be born? They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, and they share this prophecy. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. So then Herod summoned the wise men secretly, and he ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. What time have you seen it? When did you start following this star? And so he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that had they had seen when it rose, went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. You see, this star was a, a miracle. It was something that appeared and then went away and it appeared and it moved and it took them there. And so that's why they, they noticed this star when it came into the sky. And this is why it, it interests them, because they knew it was going to lead them to a king. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. God had given grace to them, unmerited favor. And, and what's interesting is he's bringing these pagan, um, these pagan astrologers from, it just says they're from the east. It doesn't say exactly where. But he's bringing these pagan Gentile astrologers to him. And Jesus is already bringing all peoples, all nations to himself. And he's still in diapers. <laughs> And this is amazing to see the work of God. So when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and they worshiped him. And I'm sure Mary is just looking in, at all of this in awe. Then they opened their treasures. They offered him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And then they were being warned in a dream not to return to Herod. So they departed to their own country by another way. It's just so cool to see that joy cannot be stolen. They had joy and they had an enemy that was seeking to destroy their joy and God protected it. And, and maybe you're sitting there saying, you know what? I haven't had joy in a very long time. And maybe you think me and or scripture, God's holy inspired word is lying in some way, shape or form. Because I know that this life can be distracting and we can be distracted from the joy of God. This life can be distracting. Satan is ruthless and he can try to steal our joy. But what we find from today's scripture is that if we understand joy and happiness, because sometimes you and I may be calling happiness joy. And when those happy moments come, you're worshiping God, you're praising God, you're following God. But maybe those sad moments come or when those sad moments come, those hard moments, then you say, where's my joy where, where's joy gone for me? It's not here. Well, what you're talking about is happiness, not necessarily joy. Joy is something that's eternal, that is based upon the hope that we have of eternal life with Jesus Christ forever in heaven. And that's, that's what cannot be stolen. So today we're going to talk about some very practical ways 
on how your joy can be every single day. You can have joy every single day and it how you can have it not be stolen from you. Because not even the Grinch can steal our joy, just like the Grinch couldn't steal the joy of those in Whoville. So how do we do it? Well, number one is we have to focus on God. We have to focus on the things above. And that's what we see from the wise men. It says they listened to the king. After they listened to the king and they went and they saw him, then it says they went back outside. And behold, that star that they had seen is now reappeared to them. That star is up in the sky. And so they start following that star and they start following it until they it rested over the place where the child was. It rested over a single place, a single house, because it says when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. They knew that something from above led them to their source of joy, and that's Jesus Christ. And it says they went into the house. You and I are to focus on the things above. We understand that this world can be distracting, but you and I have to overcome the distractions. We have to overcome the distractions of life and get outside of ourselves and look above because if we just stay in our situation, we're not always going to be happy. So we have to get out of our situation to say, okay, I'm not happy right now. Maybe I'm sad. Maybe I'm hurt. Maybe I'm ticked off. But if I get out of my situation, then I can look at the way things God sees the, see the things that God sees and the ways that God sees. And I can say, you know what? All right. I can see maybe there's a different um, plan here. Maybe there's a uh, some good that can come out of a bad situation. Uh, maybe uh, I can just hope that I'm going to spend eternity with God one day. And I can be sure of that. That's where my joy comes from. When I focus on things above, I get out of my current circumstance. And you and I need to do that. That's how we avoid those distractions and and see through Satan's lies. The Apostle Paul, a follower of Jesus Christ, says this in a letter he wrote in Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. He says, if then you have been raised with Christ, if then you are following Jesus Christ and you're raised to a new creation, you're, you're living different. Uh, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. So he says, you and I are to seek things that are above. We have to get out of our situation. We have to stop looking at things only on this earth, only in our human minds. We have to get out and seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. He says, set your minds on things above, not on the things of this earth. And that's exactly what we see the who's doing in Whoville is that, Everything was stolen from this. Christmas was ruined as far as the Grinch thought. Hmm. But they were able to focus on things above. The wise men were able to focus on things above. They were able to discern the lies that Herod was telling them. Hey, come and and give me words so I could uh, see where this child is. I'd like to worship this child. Herod did not want to worship the child. Herod did not want to worship Jesus. He actually wanted to kill the source of joy. He wanted to literally be a killjoy. He wanted to kill the source of joy for the whole entire world because of the threat to his throne. Now, Herod, and this is a whole major lesson that we can understand from this account, is that joy in Christ cannot be killed. Joy in Christ cannot be killed. It can be attacked, and attacks will come against it. And so just because you have joy in knowing that you are forgiven, that you have God's grace, and that's the re- that's the outcome of receiving God's grace, it doesn't mean that attacks aren't going to come, but it does mean that God will protect the hope that you have of eternal life in heaven with him. And you can have joy, and that's, that's where it cannot be taken away. It can't be killed. Now, Herod didn't do all bad things in his life. Um, He ruled from 37 to 4 BC, and he was the king of the Jews at this point. That's why um, it was a threat, because this new these men from a a foreign land are coming in and saying, hey, there's a new king. And Herod says, no, no, there's not. And so he was the king of the Jews at the time. And in hard times, he actually took care of the Jewish people whether it was for political reasons or just because he cared about them, probably political reasons, but he took care of them. He cut their taxes in hard times. He actually gave them grain to feed them 
during times of famine and during hard times that they went through, he rebuilt and remodeled the temple to even more, uh, even to greater splendor than in King Solomon's day. The temple looked amazing. He even uh, extended Israel's territory. He conquered other lands. He actually built amphitheaters and and uh, outdoor uh, stadiums and and he did amazing things socially for the people. But when Herod suspected conspiracy, when he suspected a threat to his throne, he destroyed any threat to his throne that came up. It didn't matter if it was two of his wives that he had executed. It didn't matter if he it were they were his sons. He had three of his sons killed. It didn't matter if it was a mother-in-law. He had one of his mother-in-laws killed because he thought he had a threat to the throne. And so when Jesus comes up, of course, I'm going to destroy this threat to my power. But as the Apostle Paul says, seek the things that are above. Get out of the distractions that's in this world that's distracting you from the joy of God. Seek the things that are above. Well, how in the world do we do that? Well, in Philippians, Paul writes another letter, and he's telling the Christians, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. (laughs) So how do we seek the things that are above? Rejoicing is one of those ways. And I want you to understand and and pay attention to what he says in Philippians 4.4. He said, Rejoice in the Lord. He doesn't just say rejoice in your suffering, rejoice in um, the good things, the good presence you're getting, rejoice in um, the job that you have, rejoice in the people that are around you. No, he says rejoice in the Lord. That is the center of our rejoicing. That is where joy comes from. And he says rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. And so Paul's saying all the time you're to rejoice. When's the last time that you've rejoiced over anything? Maybe that's something that you need to do is a a refocusing for your life, for your mindset, is to lead your mind to think about the things that are above. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, Paul says, you need to pay attention. I'm going to say it again. Rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. The Lord's with us. The Lord is right here. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. He talks about anxiety here because let's face it, this life can produce anxious moments, anxious times. And Paul says, don't be anxious about anything. Instead, pray. Instead, thank God for what he's given you. Instead, um, let your request be known to God. And so what do you see Paul saying here? He's saying, focus on the things above, refocus Take yourself out of your situation and see the way things way the way God sees them. Think about things maybe the way God thinks about them. He says, And when you do this, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So he's saying, Okay, you need to be thankful, rejoice, you need to pray, and we need to let the peace of God guard our hearts. You see, our culture a lot of times says you need to lead your heart or follow your heart and and let your heart lead you. No, that's a lie. Our hearts will lead us astray. Paul says, no, actually, your hearts need to be guarded with the peace that surpasses all understanding. The peace of God. Let that guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And you see the center point here is Jesus Christ. And that's what it was for the wise men. They followed the star. The star led them to Jesus, and that was the source of their joy. And they went in and they worshiped him. Finally, brothers, whatever's true, whatever's honorable, think about these things. Whatever's just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, think about these things. If there is any excellence, think about that. If there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. So Paul's saying you have to shift your mindset. You and I need to shift our mindsets a lot of the times. We can get so distracted and then we wonder, why aren't we happy? Where's our joy? Well, your joy is still there if you're following Jesus Christ. You're a child of the King. You're just distracted from it. Paul says, rejoice always. Rejoice, joy, (laughs) 
is a result of receiving God's grace. So thank God for your grace, the grace that he's shown you. Thank God for forgiveness. If you don't have anything else and you can't think of anything else to thank God for today, thank him for forgiveness. Thank him for your grace, the grace that he's given you. Guard your heart, Paul says, by thinking about that which is eternal, that which is above, that which is out of this world. Maybe you need to be listing off things of Philippians 4.8, and this is something um, my family's been working on. Philippians 4.8, whatever is true. So start naming off some things that are true. What's true in your life? God loves you. God sacrificed for you. God has a plan for you. God wants to include you in his work on this world. God's included people in your life to pour into you. God has given people in your life for you to pour into. You see this all going on. Whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, anything worthy of worship, think about these things, Paul says. You are to refocus. You see, joy came from above to these wise men, and joy still comes from above today. After we refocus, we are to follow Jesus Christ, and that's how you and I can have joy. To follow Jesus. To follow Jesus. Philippians 4.9, Paul says, What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, Practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. What I see from that word practice is practice is hard. Practice, practicing takes time. It, it takes intentionality. And you and I are to practice being joyful. Practice focusing on God. So how do you need to follow God today? How do you need? Maybe you need to refocus your life. Maybe you need to seek him like the wise men were. Maybe you need to worship him like the wise men were. Maybe you're not following Jesus. That's where you need to start. Maybe you need to proclaim that you are following him by going through with baptism. Maybe you need to follow him by ministering to people around you or forgiving somebody that's hurt you. And all of those things takes you refocusing on the things above and getting out of your situation. Maybe anxiety is a real problem in your life. Maybe you need to have some counseling and having people walk with you. If you need that, let me know. Let us know at Ava General Baptist Church, and we will help you with that. To lead you to freedom and to lead you a place that you can focus on the joy and get rid of the distractions in your life. Because what I see here in Matthew chapter 2, verse 12, is that God protects his joy. It says, And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. The God protected his joy, and he led the wise men a different way. It's not necessarily safe, but it's secure following Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus is protected here, but in 30 years, he would go to the cross so that you and I can have joy for eternity. Merry Christmas. That's what Christmas is all about. So... The Grinch is right. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas perhaps means a little bit more. I hope that you are able to focus on joy today. May God bless you and may he take care of you. May he lead you into deeper and deeper joy every single day. Merry Christmas.